Hello, sewing people of the internet. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this fanny pack based solely on this rendering that I found on Instagram. Before I get into that, though, if you like the videos that I make on this channel, you can help me out by clicking on the like button, subscribing if you're not already a subscriber, sharing this video with people that you think might also like it, and by purchasing merchandise from my Teespring store. I'll put a link in the description where you can buy t-shirts and cool stickers and other stuff. Thanks. Also, what do you think about the kind of current resurgence of fanny packs? Is it going to be a trend that lasts for a while or is it a flash in the pan? Are these things useful items or just goofy? Comment below. So fanny packs. Honestly, I'm not really a fan of them. I'm old enough to have been around when these things were popular the first time and I've used them and they have their, their use, but it's a very specific look. If you've watched any of my videos, you probably have noticed that I'm clearly not a fashion expert, but I am aware that there has been a resurgence of the popularity of the fanny pack, and for some reason, especially for it to be worn across the chest like a sling bag. I personally don't care for that look myself. Maybe I'll get used to it. But, you know, I do strongly feel that we should all be able to wear and use whatever gear we want, and, you know, if you like it, then you like it, and what I think doesn't matter. One positive thing I can say about the fanny pack is that it's a fun and relatively quick sewing project. Before we get into how I constructed this pack, uh, I just want to mention the name. I know I have some viewers in the UK, and for you viewers, I'm sorry. I know that fanny means something completely different for you than it does for us in the US. Uh, I don't really like the name fanny pack even here with our meaning of the word. Um, I think maybe waist pack or hip pack or something might be a better name, but I don't think this video is going to have the kind of penetration that would be required to get a worldwide agreement on a name change for this thing. So for the purposes of this video, with apologies to my UK viewers, it's a fanny pack. So a couple of weeks ago, I was perusing Instagram and I saw this rendering by an industrial designer named Marcus Hamilton. I was immediately struck by the clean design and the subtle details like the purple zipper end tabs and the purple paracord zipper pull and the contrasting stitching on the bar tacks on the webbing. Up until now I've been resisting chasing the fanny pack trend but when I took a look at this rendering, I was immediately inspired to try to make it. By the way, Marcus posts a lot of cool sketches, renderings, and finished projects on his Instagram. If you enjoy what I do on this channel, it's a good bet you'll like seeing his work, so if you're on Instagram, go follow him. My idea for this project was to pretend that I was given this rendering and no other information and tasked to create a prototype of the pack. I wanted to make it as close as possible to the rendering. Fortunately, other than the purple paracord, I also happen to have everything I needed in my stash to make this. So, looking at the rendering, I was pretty sure that this webbing across the front was one inch nylon webbing, uh, either mil spec 17337 or something similar to that. I have quite a bit of 17337 webbing on hand, so I used that as a reference to scale the rest of the dimensions for the bag. The way I figured out the dimensions, I just had this image on my phone and I took a pair of calipers and I scaled this drawing, I'm going to show you on this because it will look better, but I scaled the drawing so that the one inch webbing was a, a quarter of an inch and I just used these calipers to transfer the distance from here to a ruler so I could get the right dimensions. And then I used the calipers to measure other points, so I could measure the width of this flange here, and transfer that distance to a ruler, multiply it by four, and that'll give me the actual dimension. Again, converting from the size that was on my phone. You could also expand this image on a larger monitor so that the webbing is exactly one inch, and you could just transfer one inch from a ruler with calipers, or just Hold your ruler up to the monitor if you want. Uh, and then it would be a one-to-one -one ratio and you can just take measurements and transfer them to your material. I tried to keep this pack as faithful as possible to the rendering. Uh, there were basically two significant changes that I made. One was the label that's on the rendering. Of course, doesn't say it's so hard. That's my label. So I put 
one of my labels on here. And then, while it doesn't show a buckle in the rendering, it appears that the buckles would be double adjustable buckles with equal length straps on both sides of the pack. Uh, I happen to have a one and a half, this is one and a half inch webbing uh, for the straps. And I happen to have a side release buckle for one and a half inch webbing, but it was a single adjustable, so there's no adjustment on the female side of it. I actually think I kind of like that for a pack like this, uh, rather than having the buckle centered on your back or having to move one or two of the straps to adjust. Uh, just having it on one side seems maybe slightly more convenient, but I didn't put a lot of thought into that. It's just, that's what I had on hand. I, I don't know how well you can see it in this lighting, but the purple fabric for the zipper end tabs that I had isn't the same purple as paracord and it's not a perfect match to what the image shows but you know that's what I had on hand I was gonna go buy fabric just to make those in the rendering the zipper is shown as a reverse coil zipper I don't know if he intended it to be a water resistant zipper or not but since it's not particularly shiny uh, I was just assuming just a regular zipper with the coils reversed and by the way if you're not aware of it the way you achieve this reversed coil look is just by putting a reversed slider. You have to buy a special slider for the size zipper you have. This is number eight continuous coil YKK zipper. So if you want to have that cleaner look of a reverse coil, you just have to buy a different slider. You can't flip it, uh, get a regular slider and flip it over. It won't work. Using the measurements I took from the rendering, I made a full-size sketch of the bag. I decided to make the fanny pack out of 400 denier nylon pack cloth. Partly because it's the only black fabric that I happen to have, but I think it's actually perfect material for a fanny pack. I used my scale drawing to determine the dimensions of the cut pieces. To make this curve, I just used what I had on hand, in this case a small can of compressed air. I clipped the two pieces together and cut them simultaneously to keep the shape consistent. To do the bar tacks, which require zigzag stitches, I pulled out the Singer 237. Initially, I was not going to put a liner in this bag, but I changed my mind. I had this cheap fabric that I bought from a big box store probably a year or two ago, and so I just decided to use it since I didn't really have any other use for it. Because I decided to add the liner after I already constructed the gusset, I had to sort of improvise something, but it ended up turning out okay. I don't always leave things like bobbin changes in my videos, but I left this one in here because A, it went pretty quickly, and B, it sort of demonstrates that if you have pre-wound bobbins that you've already wound for your project, or if you're winding bobbins as you go, if your machine is set up to do that, it really isn't a big deal when you have to change the bobbin.
to make the liners for the front and back panels, I just trace those panels over the lining fabric and cut them out. I realize you can't see the image on my phone at this point, but here I'm using my calipers to try to determine the dimensions of the wings on the side of the pack that attach the waist webbing to the body of the pack. I probably should have used the metric system so I wouldn't have to multiply fractions. Hi. <laughs> that's very helpful. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. That's not for you. Excuse me. The wings are just basically a kite shape, but it it took me some mental gymnastics to try to figure out exactly what the orientation was so I could sew the two pieces together and then I turned those out to make the finished panel. A chopstick makes a great tool for turning out corners. After turning the pieces out, I top stitched the edges. I headed back to the 237 to do the bar tack on the main waist webbing to the wing. By the way, I don't know if wing is the right name for this part, but that's what I'm calling it. This machine is perfectly capable of doing this stitch quite a bit faster, but because the contrasting stitching shows uh, pretty prominently, I didn't want to go fast and take a chance on having a flaw that I needed to correct, so I just took my time. It's often faster to do things right slowly than to do them incorrectly quickly. I sewed the male and female buckles to the ends of the webbing in a pretty standard way. I just double folded the ends after passing them through the buckle and sewed them down. And then I made a mistake. I like to pre-sew these pieces onto the back panel before sewing all the pieces together. This is the correct orientation on the good side of the back of the panel, but this first one I put on the wrong side or the inside of the panel. Once I corrected that mistake, I was able to sew the gusset onto the back panel. After turning it out, I realized I'd made yet another mistake. I put the gusset on backwards so the zipper opens the wrong way. So I seam ripped it apart and reattached it with staples to secure it for sewing.
Are you helping? Excuse me. Hi. Excuse me. Good boy. So you remember all those staples? Staples are a super handy way to base the kinds of fabrics I like to work with together for sewing, but you probably need to remember to remove them before you turn the pieces out and cut yourself. After sewing the other panel on and remembering to remove the staples, I was able to turn it out and see how the bag looked. And incidentally, I intend to bind the interior seams on this project, but I'm waiting for a new binding attachment, so for now, they're unbound. So the last thing I had to do was to replicate the paracord zipper pull. So that's how I made this fanny pack. I made this thinking that I was never going to use it, but on the day I completed it, my wife and I decided to ride our bikes to a nearby spot for lunch, and I thought, well, what the heck, I'll, I'll try it out. And it turns out to be just the ticket for carrying my phone, my keys, and my wallet, uh, especially in a circumstance where I'm wearing, you know, I was wearing bicycle shorts that didn't have ample pocket space. And I think that that's an application where I would probably actually use this pack. Uh, I do a lot of stand-up paddle boarding and snorkeling, and if I'm doing an activity where I'm wearing athletic gear that doesn't have a lot of pockets and afterwards need to, you know, stop at the store or whatever, this might be a handy way to carry the things I normally carry in my pockets. Kudos again to Marcus Hamilton. Uh, this was a really nicely designed pack. It was very easy for me to put together. It fits really comfortably around my waist. Um, it's just really nice job. Uh, thanks again to you, Marcus, for allowing me to use your rendering in this video. I normally design my own projects, and not having to do that work up front made this a really pleasurable project to do. So, thanks.